Hey there, boys and girls, I want to let you know that one of my favorite sponsors, Miniature Market, has teamed up with me to give away a $150 shopping spree to one lucky viewer. So, good for anything and everything that they carry, which is to say pretty much any tabletop game you could imagine. But the giveaway is going to end in a couple of days, so make sure you enter and be sure to tell your friends and gaming group to enter in as well so you guys can snag some new swag and games. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that I am a big advocate for Miniature Market because, well, I shop there. It's true. I discovered them back in 2015 when I was looking for the cheapest and best ways to get my hands on some of those WizKids icons of the realms minis, and Miniature Market had better pricing than my local game shop, Amazon, and pretty much everywhere else. I bought a brick and added a couple more boosters to hit that $100 mark, and I got them shipped to me for free. So whether you're looking for miniatures, Magic the Gathering, board games, Dungeons and Dragons, Warhammer, or even a few new sets of dice from Q Workshop, Miniature Market is a gamer's paradise. Go check them out and they're amazing deals. Trust me, it'll be worth your time. Dungeons and Dragons has always been about the fantasy. That's what drove people to the game when Gygax and Arneson were toying around with rules to turn larger wargaming into more intimate combat and eventually adding in fantasy elements. Without fantasy elements, you really just have more historical war and soldiers. But fantasy, that's to say magic, changes everything and lights up the imagination for dungeon masters and players to create incredible worlds and epic stories. And the evolution, or perhaps more accurately, the resurgence in recent years as the game moved away from 3rd edition and definitely 4th edition from combat into more impactful storytelling and world building has left us at a bit of a crossroads with the suspension of disbelief when it comes to how much magic would really affect everything. Let's face it, Faerun is absolutely about as high of a fantasy setting as you're going to get. So for a bit of fun, I thought it would be amusing to take a look at all the ways that magic would really just F absolutely everything up. Because it would. It would completely ruin everything. Let's start off by looking at one of the most devastating spells in all of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Create food and water. Yes, you heard me. Devastating, I tell you. Level three, verbal and somatic only, so it doesn't even need like a diamond or I don't know, some like lizard guts to make, quote, you create 45 pounds of food and 30 gallons of water on the ground or in containers within range, enough to sustain up to 15 humanoids or five steeds for 24 hours. This spell is freaking instantaneous. It takes a single action to cast. Like, what? Are you serious? Do you have any idea what that would do to an economy? Why would people even keep farming? Why wouldn't everyone just learn how to cast magic from spell scrolls or, hell, mass-produce wands to feed everyone? Cities would be bustling at the seams and leaders would retain their power by promising everyone food. Or worse yet, everyone would become dependent on being fed in the breadline and corrupt leaders would begin to control the masses by withholding their food from the peasants like Mad Max Fury Road. And no material cost whatsoever? I mean, even in Harry Potter, when they would eat at Hogwarts and all the food would magically appear, in reality, it was just being summoned from below after being cooked and prepared by the Hogwarts house elves. It was still cooked and prepared. They didn't just magic food out of nowhere. And the worst part is, is we haven't even discussed Goodberry yet. All it takes is one good look at the factory farming systems and infrastructure that has been in any developed first world country to realize the overwhelming implications on population that magically creating food would have on the world. Now that we've beefed up all of our populations and our cities are bursting at the seams, what about disease? A good old plague will even things out, right? Wrong. First off, we have detect poison and disease. Did someone get a little plague? City officials worried that it might sweep through the streets and destroy half the population? No problem. Just start forcing everyone to have a mandatory checkup as the city's army of clerics begin rifling through the citizens in the bread lines in large 60-foot swaths to find any infected and then cast lesser restoration on anyone who glows. And now we really have a population problem. And with no need to send people out to farm, the remaining resources become more and more scarce, like space. Fast forward the clock 10 years, and you have too many kingdoms and domains 
desperate for land, which ultimately leads to war. So pretty much what I'm saying is, is that clerics create war. They do. Am I being a bit cheeky here? Probably a bit, but maybe not as cheeky as you might think. Now, let's leave all these problems created by healthcare magic behind and look at a different route, the transmutation wizards and their gifts of alchemy. While paper money seems to be rare to be seen in person nowadays, if you've ever handed over a 50 or $100 bill to see the cashier whip out that little brown marker to check its authenticity, you can imagine how every single interaction would be in a world where dudes could just make a copper coin straight up silver, but only temporarily. You'd have a pretty good idea on how business would be conducted in every city. People might even make anyone paying in silver, I don't know, cut themselves to see if they would drop concentration or even wait for an hour in case their buddy sent them in to buy something while they waited around the corner. In short, the copper and silver market would be worthless. And I know, I know. Well, the coins would be different shapes, blah, blah, blah. But with a little practice whittling wooden coins for the region, and of course, a bit of magic, you could set up a forfeit coin operation in no time. And while detect magic would be another workaround, every single vendor would need capabilities to make sure that there is nothing wonky with the coins they're being paid with. Dungeon Masters, let me just ask. When's the last time you had a merchant whip out a detect magic wand when your players went out shopping? Now let's take a look at another bit of magic, charms. Oh man, I cannot imagine anything wreaking more havoc on a society than one where people could just go around charming and sometimes even outright controlling others. How many disputes would guards be called to settle for shopkeepers claiming to have been swindled while under the effects of a charm spell? How many terrible acts committed against others would people claim to have been under the control of a potion of mind control or dominate person spell? While you can't make people harm themselves, you can certainly make them harm others. Kings and queens wouldn't even dare to be seen at parades or festivals, fearful that it would take just one person in the crowd 60 feet away from dominating the guard standing next to them to take their head off or poison a drink. Which is why magic in Dungeons and Dragons would really ruin everything, as any and every leader would most likely outright ban the use of any magic within the kingdom that wasn't completely under heavy supervision and training by the state. It would be exactly like Warhammer 40k with their psychers and the black ships going around collecting anyone who is even remotely capable of psionics. If they can be used as a tool for the state, then they're basically forced into servitude. If not, then they're killed and dumped. Can you guys even imagine how magic would be viewed by someone in charge of a kingdom or city-state. At any moment, any war mage could just teleport next to the king while he sleeps. Every kingdom would have like a thousand wards like Hogwarts and an army of clerics and wizards at their disposal, constantly checking for doppelgangers and cursed magic items being slipped into the castle. They would probably spend every moment in fear while simultaneously pouring gold into magic academies to train and fill its standing army and protect the kingdom from magical threats, both domestic and abroad. And in totalitarian states, murder would be non-existent. Why? Speak with dead. How easy would it be to have the courts barred call forth the spirit of a murdered party to have it describe who killed them? Want to make sure that they're telling the truth? Bring in the accused and slap down a zone of truth. That's simple. Speaking of speak with dead, what kinds of ways would this alter or create new traditions? In Mexico, we have Dia de los Muertos. Can you imagine how having the ability to talk with your loved ones again might affect, I don't know, literally any and everyone? Did a rich noble intend for his estate to go to his second wife instead of his spoiled sons? No problem. Just ask him when a dispute comes up. Did you forget Nana's secret baked cookie recipe? Pay a bar to have a word with her. I mean, you'd have to dig her up, but you know, if you really want that recipe, you'll do what it takes. And we're not even going to kind of talk about fireballs, illusion magic, disguise self, regenerate, lichdom, stone shape, polymorph, scrying, control flames, invisibility, good lord, the implications that invisibility would actually have. And finally, can we take a look at the implications of vicious Mockery. There is literally a magical way for an insult 
to kill people. And it's a freaking cantrip. I mean, it would be one of the very first spells people could even learn how to cast. And it has no components other than verbal. Great. Now insults are outlawed in the kingdom. The kingdom has no tolerance for busking comedians who take jabs at the audience. All it takes is for one commoner to claim he's been psychically attacked, and the next thing you know, the entire city would look like something out of The Giver. Great book, by the way. The point is, magic would really ruin everything. So the real question and takeaway is, what do you want out of your game and roleplay experience? Are you willing to set aside your suspension of disbelief and just enjoy the story? Or do you enjoy the little bits of realism, you know, if magic actually was real? And if you're a dungeon master who likes to homebrew and create their own worlds and magic systems, this is a creative exercise for you. Think about how magic might work in your world and perhaps think if you want to show the negative side from time to time, and not just the positives. How would your players react to a paranoid kingdom where all magic users are to be put to death on sight? What would happen if your bard strolls into a new city devoid of magic and finds himself on trial suddenly for his own natural gifts? What happens if they see a young girl being pulled from her mother for her magical gifts, knowing that she'll be carted away to either be trained like a tool for the state, or if she fails Whatever tests, she'll be killed. Is there an adventure in there somewhere? Most definitely. I want to give a huge shout out to all of the amazing patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. Guys, it's because of you that I can keep making videos like this. And so for that, I am just so very grateful. If you guys like what I do here, you want to support more content like this and grab some extra rewards or maybe jump in a game with me, welcomeadventures.com is a great place to do that. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I put out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.